When many of us go to purchase a guitar pedal or an amplifier, usually one of the things that we hold in highest esteem is the quality of that particular device. And one of the ways that many of us qualify a particular product is based on its build quality. And within that, there is a lot of mythology, a lot of misunderstandings, or maybe a false evaluation of the quality of something based on a particular marker. But I think one of the markers that's the most confusing, but also at the same time has a lot of weight in people's decision-making as to whether they're gonna buy something or not, or whether they believe it to be good quality or not, is based on whether a product is hand-wired or it's on a circuit board or PCB. Now today we're gonna to investigate what the realities are about something that's hand-wired versus PCB assembled. And we're gonna bring in four experts in the field that can really help us synthesize this conversation and be able to provide some clarity based on what the actual facts are and how something is manufactured and how that informs the quality of that device and whether it's something that you wanna purchase or not based on this information. All in all, my hope at the end of this video is that you have some understanding about where the benefits and drawbacks are of hand-wired versus PCB, and maybe give you an opportunity to try some things that maybe you hadn't considered before based on some of the information that's gonna be presented here. Now, I'm gonna take this in two different sections. I'm gonna talk about this in terms of guitar pedals, and I'm gonna talk about this in terms of amplifiers. Even though all of the manufacturers that we're gonna bring into the conversation today have some overlap in working in pedals and in amplifiers, I'm gonna sort of separate them based on where they offer a lot of expertise. So on the guitar pedal side, we're gonna be hearing from Josh Scott from JHS, and Robert Keeley from Keeley Electronics. And on the amplifier side, we're gonna be hearing from Dave Friedman, from Friedman Amplification, and also from John Sir. We're gonna talk about hand-wired versus PCB products, how they affect the reliability and serviceability. We're gonna talk about build quality and also about longevity, how long these products are gonna last built in these two different fashions, all things being equal. So first, let's talk about reliability. So the likelihood that this product is going to be working consistently and also I think within reliability is, is it going to sound the same if you were to buy, let's say a unit off of the first run of 100 and a unit off the fifth run of 100? Are they gonna sound the same? I think for PC board, assuming that it is made with a decent quality that the engineer, the designer of the circuit board has understood the circuit, has implemented it properly, you're gonna get probably the most consistent results with a circuit board based product. This could be whether it's serial number one or serial number 500, it's gonna sound the same. And I think a lot of our iconic pedals that we think of, that we all know and love, whether that's a Klon Centaur, a TS-808, an Analog Man King of Tone, these are all circuit board based products. They are all the components are on the circuit board for the most part. Maybe select components are hand wired off like the pots or maybe the foot switch. But for the most part, the circuit is all completely on a circuit board. It's not being hand wired. When it comes to hand wired in terms of reliability, there actually is less overall reliability despite what some people think. I know it looks really beautiful when you look inside and you see all these beautiful wire runs. Every time a human hand is soldering, wiring, running lead lengths, pulling through components through a turret board or whatever it may be, that increases the likelihood of a failure. And it also increases the likelihood of inconsistencies. Sometimes if a wire length is a little bit longer in a certain place in the circuit board or a gain stage, this can affect the overall tone. It can affect how noisy the product is. And there tends to be little variations from unit to unit, especially when you're talking about hand-wired circuits, when it comes to higher impedance circuits, let's say like fuzzes, maybe wahs, some overdrives and things of that nature, generally are not going to be as consistent unit to unit, especially depending on who's building them and in the environment with which they're built. Some hand-wired products that are happening on an assembly line, let's say like the newest version of the Vox Waz, those are probably gonna be fairly consistent because they've got everything pretty measured. They've probably cut a lot of the stuff to length, so it's easier to be scaled up on a manufacturing line or on, a, on an assembly line. 
but something that's kind of homegrown in, in somebody's garage that they're making sort of one at a time that maybe is very iconic or very sought after, these tend to be a little less consistent unit to unit. You're gonna have some variability that just won't be present on a circuit board based product. But enough about the reliability from my perspective. Let's bring on Josh Scott and Robert Keeley to speak more to the reliability of hand wired versus PCB and get their opinions. Are there instances where the same circuit, hand wired versus PCD, PCB has a tone difference. So when I started doing printed circuit boards, then the ground plane was much stronger, cleaner. The pedal became a lot less noisy when the gains were turned up on say fuzzes and things, just because it was just made better. It's a better design. Electronics have to be designed within the parameters of thinking about noise, thinking about power supplies, thinking about interference and PCBs generally do that a lot better. Does hand-wired sound better than PCB? And I think there's no, but you, that's just a weird statement. There's just too many factors in that. Um, I can make a PCB that sounds like crap because I could route something wrong. I could do really dumb things with that. I could put parts too close together. I could also make a hand-wired thing that sounds like crap because I wire things too close together or don't solder it well, so yeah. But I know what people want to know. They want to know that the hand wired they paid for sounds better. And I can't say that it does. Well, I'm sure that there's people that could hear the difference. Bill Finnegan spent a while working on his clone and testing out parts and verifying that how remarkably similar they sounded to each other. So I don't think there's a hand wired through hole iPhone that I could compare the quality <laughs> back and forth too. I don't know that anyone would want such a monstrosity. If you go back and forth and just do a direct translation and you use quality surface mount parts, then it should be pretty negligible, you know, for guitar pedals. So next let's talk about serviceability. How easy is it to repair or make changes to these types of products, circuit board based versus hand wired? Now, I think it goes without saying that if you have something that's hand wired, you can very easily make changes to it because everything is open and available. Most technicians could work on this without necessarily needing a schematic to know exactly where everything is going. Again, this is speaking generally, of course, a schematic is always helpful. On a circuit board based product, it can be much more difficult to make changes or to do repairs, especially if everything's mounted on the PC board. You definitely will need to take care and time to desolder items, especially if jacks and foot switches are on a PC board, or if there's various ribbon cables that are holding together multiple different levels of PC board that are on the actual pedal itself. Certainly as far as a serviceability standpoint, it can be much more difficult to repair a PC board based product. Now, with that said, if the PC board product is well built, if it was made with a consideration to be able to be repaired and the designer has put the appropriate spacing between stuff that might be likely to fail, something like a foot switch, like a quarter inch jack, they tend to maybe not be as easy as hand wired products, but they are still fairly easy overall. If they're easy to be able to be disassembled without having to desolder anything, and there are a lot of companies that are soldering circuit boards in place after they're assembled or as they're getting assembled. So it makes it very difficult to try to take them apart without having to take off sections, desolder different sorts of cables or things like that in order to separate the products. That makes it extremely hard to be able to troubleshoot or extremely hard to be able to repair or modify. When it comes to hand wired, none of that is a problem. So certainly in terms of serviceability, you could make a case for that. But I think all things being equal, if the products are well made, you shouldn't have to disassemble it for any reason. And if you do, it should be something fairly basic, like a jack or a foot switch, something like that. But let's hear from Robert Keeley and Josh Scott on this. Let's see what they have to say and what their take is on serviceability. Hand wiring is more expensive because hand wiring requires more time and in business and manufacturing time equals money and that is a cost that we have to as manufacturers go is that a valid reason to do this is this insanity or not like is it actually a better product or not so in my case is it's not a better product i can build many more of the same pedal with a pcb and have lower noise better quality, longer lasting, more repairable device than I could in the days when I did everything hand wired. For manufacturing, it's very sensible for me to do it with uh, surface mount uh, circuit boards. The cost is lower. The quality is 
higher. The amount of mistakes that are made is an order of magnitude less, at least. It's, it's nothing but an upside. That's why the whole world went to it. <laughs> you know? Next, let's talk about longevity. And I think in some ways this can maybe even tie into serviceability a, a bit. How long is the product likely to last? Well, I think, again, with both these products being equally well-made, well-assembled, the solder joints are good, you're probably gonna get similar longevity out of both of these. Now, with a circuit board based product, again, assuming that you're using at least a minimum basic quality circuit board, that the assembly is done well, that the design of the circuit board is done properly so that there isn't any stress on the circuit board. Often if you just have one level circuit board where all the jacks, switches, foot switch, everything is on one board, there can often be some stress in those scenarios because everything that's getting depressed, pushed on, maneuvered, manipulated is all on one level. Sometimes you can get some things to break over time because there's so much stress on the board. One of the really smart designs I see of circuit boards is people actually separate the boards into different sections. So they might have their potentiometers on one board that's separated from a different circuit board that has their jacks and maybe the main components on in terms of resistors, capacitors, etc. And then they have a separate board for the foot switch. So all of the things that are getting stress and pressure, those are all separated from each other so that they don't interfere with one another. They're all on separate planes and it really reduces reduces the amount of friction and the amount of damage that could be done to the product and kind of isolates all those separate things from each other. Now on hand wiring, typically this isn't a concern because everything is supported by the chassis. The foot switch is supported by the chassis, the jacks are supported by the chassis, the DC connector is supported by the chassis. And as far as the component assembly is concerned, you know, those are all hand wired one to the next in some sort of turret board or some other fashion of being able to do a hand wired circuit. And so this is certainly less of an issue in terms of the longevity, presuming that the person has assembled it well and has soldered everything properly, there's really no reason to believe that this would be cut short in any other way. Again, I did talk about the human error element, which is more likely on a hand-wired unit, but let's just presume both things are created equal in terms of the circuit board and hand-wired. Probably going to last roughly the same amount of time, despite maybe some of the inconsistencies by being hand-wired just in terms of sound unit to unit. But let's hear from Josh Scott and Robert Keeley in terms of the long-term likelihood of these products working in the wild and whether it's more likely that they think a hand-wired versus PCB might last longer. Surface mount PCBs are just as good as hand-wired through hole and technically, scientifically, and from a state of design and manufacturing, they are actually better with noise spec interference allowing you to design things in smaller spaces and quality long term. There's a reason my supercomputer iPhone, I can drop it every day because, you know, I'm real brilliant. I drop it constantly. It still keeps working. If it was through hole, there might be issues. If it was hand wired, there's a reason surface mount works so well. So if it sounds good, it is good. I'll just say that and end on that. I don't think that uh, surface mount devices, circuit boards, are necessarily uh, any less reliable at all. As a matter of fact, I think they're more reliable. Um, so, but if someone wants to purchase pedals that are only through hole, that they'll just limit themselves to a smaller batch and lower quality sound effects. So, yeah, more power to them, I guess. Now, before we move the conversation on to amplifiers and talk with Dave Friedman and John Sir, I want to quickly touch on one caveat of circuit board based products, which is often very much talked about on gear forums and things like that, which is the use of surface mount components versus through hole components. Now, when we're talking about circuit board based products, you usually see some variation of those two, sometimes both of them on the same board. And the surface mount versions of components basically lay flat on top of the circuit board. They're very small, whereas the through hole components actually feed through the entire board. They tend to be much larger. And this is kind of an older style component that was generally used on early pedals from the 70s, 80s, and 90s. And now we've gone to more smaller components to try to fit as much stuff on one circuit board as possible. Now, there are a lot of people that talk about how surface mount components have a completely different sound and that they completely disrupt the, the beautiful sounds that were gotten by their through hole counterparts. And generally I would say that that is completely false. In most cases, you actually get tighter tolerances 
on a surface mount component, which means that there's less variability between pedals because you have tighter tolerances often being 1% or less in some cases. And they also tend to be less microphonic. So it means that your pedal is generally a little quieter in most cases. Now there are some circumstances where there aren't equivalents in a surface mount component from a through-hole component, and you're forced to use through-hole in certain applications. And even on our pedals, even though we try to stick with mostly surface mount wherever we can, where it doesn't affect the sound, there are some elements where either it doesn't exist in a surface mount or there is a sonic impact of having to use a surface mount versus a through-hole, and in those cases, we use through-hole. But for most companies, through-hole is going to become obsolete probably in the next five to 10 years for most of the stuff that we use for pedals. So most people are gonna be transitioning over to all surface mount anyway, if they haven't already, and maybe they're gonna reserve some of those select parts that do sound better in through hole, or they're gonna to have to either redesign the product or find an alternative part that might work in order to fulfill whatever that sonic void is if they're no longer able to get the equivalent in through hole. But for the most part, I don't think that there's any sonic consequence for going surface mount if you have the same exact component and the same exact value. And in fact, you're probably gonna have a better, more consistent unit as a result of using a surface mount version of the same component all things being equal, again, because of those tighter tolerances, because of the less likelihood of microphonics. But let's hear again from Robert Healy and Josh Scott. Let's get their take on this surface mount versus through hole and whether that does affect the sound and what their opinions are on it. Lower numbers of uh, manufacturing, sometimes through hole makes sense. In most manufacturing, the irony is even full surface mount builds, like JHS is all surface mount, but we're not all surface mount because you still have to board mount through hole uh, pots, jacks, certain parts are gonna stay through hole. So usually things are a mix. So the preferred, it, to me, it's just if you want to. There's really no reason other than you want to. Are there instances where the same circuit through hole versus surface mount will have a perceived tonal difference? I'm sure there are. Trying to come up with a surface mount fuzz face. Well, you can't find surface mount germanium transistors, so you're already stuck. Yeah, there's the, you can you could probably construct some differences based on certain kinds of primitive types of circuits and stuff like that. But I, I think that the, the two technologies sound remarkably similar. So we've heard from the experts, we've heard maybe my synthesis a little bit of it where it comes to pedals. Let's move on now to amplifiers and we're gonna hear from Dave Friedman and John Sir. Now, Dave and I had a conversation through Zoom, which I'm gonna play some of those sections from. And then John has given me a written statement that answers sort of a lot of the questions that I asked that are along the lines of what we're gonna be talking about. So I'll read his written statements where they are applicable. So first let's talk about reliability, talking about hand-wired amplifiers versus PC board oriented amplifiers. Now when it comes to amplifiers in hand-wired versus PC board, I feel like in the gear community, pretty much hand-wired is considered to be the epitome of amplifiers. If it's gonna be considered well-made, if it's gonna be a premium price, people are expecting that amp to be hand-wired. And most of the classic amps that we know, whether it's a vintage Fender or a vintage Marshall, these are all going to be hand-wired amps. Now there was a time in the 70s where amps started to transition over to being made on circuit boards and there was a lot of really terrible implementations of tube amplifiers with circuit boards. I think that engineers at that time didn't understand fully about how the circuit boards would be affected by the high voltage of amplifiers. There was a lot of miscalculations and maybe even some poor design choices that were made by a lot of companies that sort of soiled the reputation of what a circuit board based amplifier could be because people's experience with them relative to their hand wired counterparts that maybe came a year before them, even with maybe the same name, make and model, just completely ruined the reputation of what a circuit board amp could be. But I think what we'll see with Dave and John is that that's really a misconception and when something is built properly with the right design elements, that it can really be great in both scenarios, whether it is hand-wired or circuit board based. 
So in terms of reliability, all things being equal, my opinion again is similarly to how it is with a pedal. You can get really consistent results if you have a well-built circuit board based amplifier and you can get really predictable sounds unit to unit. So unit serial number one sounds exactly the same as serial number 500 because all those lead lengths are standardized by way of the PC board. All the distances between things are standardized. All of the assembly of it can often be done on machine if it's done on a wave soldering machine or even if it's soldered by hand, you're gonna get very similar results unit to unit where there can be some variability in the hand wiring. There can be mistakes made in the hand wiring that are less likely when it's done by machine. These are things all to consider. But I wanna to go to the experts on this and let's first hear from Dave and then I'll read a statement that John made about this so that we really know clearly what it is that they think and how they feel about this. PC board, at least for like an amp per se, is going to get you closer to point to point, really. You're gonna be able to get the parts much closer to their locations and uh, put literally put them almost on top of the tube per se. I mean, you basically have to tweak the amp for what it is and, and it's not gonna be a worse tone or you know, the, the myth of hand wire is better. Uh, no, not really. It's way worse actually, technically. So this is what John says about PC board versus hand wiring in terms of the reliability or reasons you may or may not want to make any sort of amplifier one way or the other. So quoting from John Sir, he says, you could use whatever the circuit dictates depending on the complexity and how many that you need to make. I would go PCB for almost anything unless it was the simplest of circuits. The only reason not to use PCB is because you don't have the resources to create one or get one made, so doing something quickly by hand could be a prototype, but I certainly would not feel comfortable putting it in production unless it was the simplest of circuits. He goes on to say there are designs you really could not do without a PCB. PCB though can be done very poorly and dirt cheap or high end. I make hand wired amps as well as PCB amps mainly because Either one can be done very nicely and different customers want different things. In reality though, with a well-designed PCB, they are easier to work on and more consistent from unit to unit. Also with proper planning and PC mounted tube sockets, you can put the parts right at the socket, eliminating wires, bringing it essentially closer to a point to point. Let's now talk about serviceability. Now, I think similarly to what I thought about pedals and certainly hand wired is easier to make changes on it's easier to service i think that this is sort of like the equivalent of i don't know having like an old car with a carburetor a lot of people can work on those types of cars because they're really easy to access everything is available to you you can get in there make changes you got space to do it i think old fenders old marshals are very much like that they're easy to work on most technicians can do it. You don't exactly need a schematic for every one of these to figure out exactly what's going on or diagnose problems quickly. A circuit board based amp can be considerably harder to do that on. Now, in terms of making changes, I think it goes back to the design of the product, whether there was a consideration for things needing to be changed. Again, there are some people that are doing hybrids where they maybe wire off some of the pots onto separate circuit boards or just wire the pots on hand wired. There are situations where people might separate off the tube sockets from the main circuit board and hand wire those on to make it easier to maybe make changes or maybe try to avoid any extra heat getting on those tube sockets so that there isn't any consequence to that based on however it is that they've decided to do the design. But let's go to Dave and John again. Again, we'll get a chance to listen to Dave here and then I'll read a statement that John had provided to me. Let's check it out. For user serviceability, and if you have like bad pots, it's not, you know, it's, it's it might be better. Again, this is all based on how this board is done. The amps I have, I have some amps that are PCB. We have tube mounted sockets, all of them, power tube, everything. Never, ever ever have any issues. Our boards are so thick and then the power tube sockets are, are bolted to the chassis. So there is no stress on the board whatsoever. So here's what John Sir has to say. There is no trade-off between PC board and hand-wired amps. I've seen far more well-built products using PC boards than non-PC boards. PC boards are easier to work on due to having nomenclature and part designators. That way you can find something easily when you follow a schematic. 
So next, let's talk about build quality. And again, I think that this sort of goes back into the serviceability. Now, I think that, of course, it's always impressive when you see a beautifully hand-wired amp. It looks great. You see all those beautiful wire looms. You see everything just kind of going into the pots and the tube sockets, and it just looks really great. And I think that that's become an expectation of a lot of amplifier manufacturers. But I think as you're going to hear from Dave and from John, they almost wish that they didn't have to do this. It's almost like being typecast or, I don't know, being cast as Batman. You sort of get put into that box with all of your amplifiers and it becomes an expectation that you're going to continue to make hand-wired amplifiers, even if you know that you can get a better result or as John Sir had said before, do things that you couldn't do in a hand-wired implementation of an amplifier that PC boards really allow you to do. I think again, having something that is a well-made version of a PC board, taking the right considerations in terms of distances between components or interactions and things like that, you can replicate one-to-one -one what would happen on, as John Sir said, a turret or eyelet style hand-wired board. You can replicate that in a circuit board fashion. But let's hear what Dave and John have to say in terms of this idea of reliability and how it's going to work in terms of its quality long-term. Boards are uh, much better <laughs> and they do not sound different. Yeah. But again, you have to do them properly. More issues could come up with hand wiring because hand wiring is done by people and people are not, a, you know, are, are, can be flawed <laughs> and the wires might not route exactly the same every time. So it does create an inconsistency. Also, uh, there's more chance for poor solder connections and or cold solder joins. You'd like to say that that never happens, but th that's impossible with the kind of hand-wired, complicated hand-wired amps yeah. um, that we have. I mean, it, it, it comes up here and there. John says it's all about execution and not the method, meaning whether it's hand-wired or a PC board version of an amplifier. A well-made product is simply that. The method is the designer's choice and 90% of the time the designer is aligned with the customer's expectations. Companies don't want their products to fail, they want them to perform well. If a product has a company that stands behind the product with a warranty, has CE, and other accredited testing, I wouldn't consider one to be more valuable or better performing than the other if they were designed by the same engineer. In the end, a double-sided PC board with plated through holes would give you as many years of reliability and performance. If it's built well, if it's done right, there isn't going to be any difference. The longevity, the reliability, serviceability are all going to be really in the same category, the same amount of complexity, the same amount of ability to make sure that this amp is continuing to work year in and year out as we would expect. So lastly, let's talk about the sound quality. I think we've really covered longevity and reliability, serviceability and those types of things. But I think what it comes down to is, is it actually gonna sound better if your amplifier is hand wired or if it's made on a circuit board? And I think already in some of the responses that we've heard from both Dave and from John, we can hear that there really isn't as long as it's done right. But I wanna just go back to them one last time and just get their impressions about whether somebody should be making a decision to buy an amplifier solely based on the fact that it's hand-wired or if it's a PCB mounted amplifier and how much weight or credibility they give to those particular factors. Obviously, there's a variety of different manufacturers and I'm sure not all circuit board based amplifiers. In fact, I know not all of them are gonna be great. Just the same way that I know that there's going to be hand-wired amplifiers that are also gonna be problematic or maybe have inconsistencies unit to unit or could have excessive noise because there aren't certain consistencies or attentions to detail that need to be there in order to make them great. Let's hear from Dave and John. Let's see what they have to say to finish this out. Generally speaking, older people might have more hangups like that, but the younger ones really don't care whatsoever. Mm. They don't know the difference. Right. You know, they're, they're just like, it sounds great. Okay, great. There we go. <laughs> it really, you know, just depends on, uh, again, how it's laid out, how mm. well it's done. So, and, and you won't have any failures. You know, it's not, it's not like if you do it right, you shouldn't have to replace anything ever. Yeah. Is a hand-wired amp easier to replace certain things? Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. Uh, if you got to replace a tube socket, it's way easier, you know. Um, but again, 
it sort of depends on how the board's designed. Now, John says in terms of hand-wired versus PC board amps and whether they sound the same or you can get them to sound the same, he says, I've done this test myself and you can make a PC board that is laid out the same way as a traditional eyelet or turret board and there is no physical difference except maybe a few wires. It is 100% the execution of the method. Most PC boards, however, are not laid out the same as a hand-wired eyelet or turret board would be. Once you change the layout, you change the interactions between components in the wires, but it doesn't have to be that way and it doesn't make one better than the other. So I think John is saying here that you can make them so that they are indistinguishable from each other, PCB versus handwire, if you know what the target is that you're going for. But a lot of times that execution isn't done properly. And so you do get differences. And so people claim the circuit board version sounds worse or different than the handwired version. And I think most people just presume the handwired version is better because they hear the word handwired. And we've been sort of train to believe that that's the best way to do it. So I think we've learned a lot today between our experts and John Sir, Dave Friedman, Robert Keeley, and Josh Scott. We've got to hear a lot of different perspectives about hand-wired versus PC board. We've got to hear some perspectives about surface mount components versus through-hole components. In particular with the pedals, it's not so common to have as much surface mount related items on a high voltage amplifier, although there are some instances where there are. I think we really got to see that done properly, you can really get a great amplifier in either format or a great pedal potentially in either format based on what you do. And I think John actually said it best in terms of you can get a great version of either, but you he wouldn't recommend doing any sort of hand-wired application unless it was in really small numbers or for the purposes of prototyping. If you're gonna be doing anything in volume and you want the consistency of unit to unit to sound exactly the same, again, whether it's serial number one or serial number 5,000, having it on a circuit board that is built properly and is implemented in the right way, again, execution of the method, as John Sir said, that's really the X factor. And there's lots of great amplifier companies and pedal companies that are really doing this properly. And if you're buying one of their products, you can rest assured that it is implemented the right way, whether you're buying an amplifier from John Sir or you're buying an amplifier from Dave Friedman, or you're getting a pedal from Josh Scott, or maybe even a pedal from Robert Keeley or us at Vertex, you're knowing that you're getting something that was designed and executed the way that it needs to be in order to make sure that it's consistent. And of course, there are gonna be hand-wired products out there that are made great, just like those old Fenders and old Marshalls. And of course, that those are great to celebrate and revere and look inside and be impressed. But there are other ways to do it that are gonna get you in the exact same place. And again, it's about the implementation. It is not about it actually being circuit board based or hand-wired based and having the name imply more than simply what it is. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you dug this video, give us a thumbs up. Tell us about one of your favorite parts or about one of your favorite hand-wired amps or one of your favorite PC board amps or hand-wired pedals or circuit board based pedals so we can hear from you about what you think about these different implementations of how to build circuits, again, whether that's amps or whether that's pedals. Also, if you wanna support us, you can head over to therigdr.com. We sell guitar cables. We sell all the pedal board supplies that you're gonna need from zip ties to tie down mounts to our signature power grip Velcro. We also have all of our pedals list over on vertexeffects.com and all of our dealerships available. So you can see if a dealer's near you, you can check out one of our pedals. We would love for you to support us in that way. And an easy free way to support us is go and listen to our podcast, The Chairman of the Boards, where I get together with Brian O'Million from A Million Audio and Grant Klassen from Goodwood Audio. We have a roundtable discussion about pedal boards, gear, and best practices every single week. It's on YouTube and all the common podcatchers, whether that's Spotify or Apple. So do check that out if you haven't already. And until next time, I'm Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, AKA The Rig Doctor. And this was our look at circuit board based amplifiers and pedals versus hand wired amplifiers and pedals. See you next time.